Welcome back to the Dr. Doug Show, your resource for bone health, hormone optimization, and health span. I know we're all looking for the best supplements to take for our bone health, right? And I've reported on several different products and we're always updating and we're always coming out with new things um, because I'm spending a lot of time looking at the research and so is my team. We have a research team, we have a, a team of providers, we're all looking at what are the best things for our patients. So you probably know that I'm a big fan of adequate protein consumption. Some would call it high protein consumption. I think we should call it adequate. I speak about it a lot and some people have a hard time getting enough protein and that's totally fair. I fall into that same group. Getting adequate protein is challenging for some people. It's challenging if you're on the go. It's challenging to get good sources, especially when you're not uh, at your home, traveling, busy, etc. So one of the tools that I have learned to love over the last several months is essential amino acids or branch chain amino acids. I've been exposed to these for a long time because I've been in and out of the fitness space and I've always sort of questioned the research on it. But because of my audience for bone health, I really wanted to dig deep and see are branch chain and essential amino acid supplementation, are these tools that we should use to improve muscle mass, particularly in our audience, which is generally gonna be in you know women and, and a few men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, and potentially beyond? Is this the age group where we're really gonna see benefit from these things? So I went through some research in depth and I have a couple of studies that I wanna talk about, but I really wanna talk about sort of what these things are. So what are essential amino acids? What are branch chain amino acids? Go through a couple of studies, which I think you'll find really enlightening on making the recommendation of whether or not this should be a product that you should have in your stack. So stick around, we're gonna go through a couple of studies, we're gonna talk about the science of this, and we also have a product that we're gonna promote around branch chain amino acids and essential amino acids, so stick around for a discount, because uh, I think you're really gonna like this product. Three, two, one. All right, so I mentioned these two things in the introduction. So essential amino acids and branch chain amino acids. What are these things? Well, amino acids are simply the building blocks of protein. In fact, they're the building blocks of just about everything. Some amino acids we could make on our own in our body and some we have to get from outside the body. So those are the ones that are called essential amino acids. Now, branch chain amino acids are a group of essential amino acids. There's actually three of them, but there's a group of amino acids that just have a different structure and they're called branch chain amino acids. So BCAAs are a component of EAAs or branch chain amino acids and amino acids. So there are nine essential amino acids and there's a little bit of debate around this, but in general, there's nine. They are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. They're going to be involved in a wide range of processes, including muscle growth, muscle tendon repair, immune function, and ultimately protein synthesis. Now you can get EAAs and BCAAs from food, especially things that I talk about a lot, like high quality protein sources, meat, fish, eggs, dairy, if you can tolerate it, and in some plant-based sources like quinoa and soy. But we've talked about it in the past, and I won't dig into this now because I want to keep this relatively short, which is that plant products are going to have a different combination of amino acids. You can get complete amino acids like uh, in soy. You can get a complete protein in soy, but the combination is still different than you're going to find in animal products. And that's why uh, you can mix and match to get complete uh, proteins from plant sources, but adding some essential amino acids or BCAAs could be really, really helpful. Now a little note about BCAAs. In general, BCAAs are sometimes provided on their own because they have been found independently to play a role in reducing exercise fatigue, uh, influencing production of things like serotonin, so these neurotransmitters that are in the brain that can have an impact on how we feel. Uh, and again, they can also be found in food, but it's sometimes more difficult to find things like leucine in food products in adequate sources. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go through this uh, position statement that I saw from the International Society of Sports Nutrition. 
And so the uh, if you're not familiar with this, because this is a very sports specific thing, they laid out 15 points. I'm not going to read through all 15 points, uh, but basically they laid out 15 points based on an extensive review of the literature. So I don't want to do that because nobody wants to sit through that. I'm just going to hit a couple of these points and then I want to talk about a couple of studies specific to our population of interest that I think you'll find compelling. All right. So the first important point that they make is that free form essential amino acids, meaning that supplemental essential amino acids are a robust stimulator of muscle protein synthesis and turnover. And what that means is that they can help the body to stimulate the production of muscle, to stimulate uh, the turnover of protein within a muscle to build muscle. And that's ultimately what we wanna do. Now, the second important point here is that these EAAs will stimulate muscle protein synthesis more than an isonitrogenous protein isolate. Now, what the heck does that mean? It just means an equivalent amount of nitrogen from a protein source. So like whey, for example, uh, if you're going to use whey or, you know, if you're going to use a plant-based source like pea protein, if you were to compare them, you know, apples to apples, then EAAs are going to stimulate more muscle protein synthesis than does the complete protein on its own, which is kind of cool. All right. The third point here is that EAA will produce a rapid rise in peripheral concentrations of amino acids and that transportation of amino acids into skeletal muscle. So this is some very uh, sciencey research where they're looking at actually how are the amino acids getting into the muscle? And the answer is right, quite clearly here that yes, if you supplement these things, they do get into the muscle, therefore they can have an impact. Now, this fourth point is important because it talks about the idea that you need to consume all of the EAAs together, meaning that you need all nine in one place in order for them to have a sustained uh, benefit. If you just do BCAAs on their own, or if you just have some of the EAAs that you're going to get from an incomplete source, then you're not going to get the same benefit. So you really do need all of them together. And then the next point is, this is the fifth point here, is that these EAAs do stimulate protein synthesis at different rates of consumption. So you'll see on packages, you know, anywhere from you know, micrograms to grams to 20 grams, like the range is kind of all over the place. The research supports 1.5 grams having a, an actual benefit, which is a relatively small dose, all the way up to 18 grams in research having a benefit. And I've seen studies that have more than that. They also go on to mention here that the percentage of leucine which is one of the branched chain amino acids. The percentage of leucine is important and more leucine better. But when I talk to developers of supplements about this, leucine doesn't taste very good. So there's a kind of an upper limit of uh, threshold as to how much leucine you can actually put in uh, EAA mixture uh, and actually make it tolerable without adding in a whole bunch of garbage, you know, sweeteners and other flavors. So leucine is important, but leucine also doesn't taste very good. So we have to kind of find that balance there of what you can tolerate. All right, now the next cool point here is that what they describe is in anabolic resistant populations, which is what I'm gonna say the, the older population, and I'm gonna talk about studies that call certain populations elderly, just know that those are not my terms. Um, but when we talk about an aging population, I would consider that an anabolic resistant population, right? It's harder to build muscle in these populations. But in an anabolic resistant population, EAA supplementation will improve functional outcomes. Additionally, they go on to say that EAAs are interactive with other interventions. Specifically, what they're saying here is that EAAs by themselves don't actually do the work. It's kind of like testosterone and, and muscle building. Like you take testosterone, are you going to build muscle? Eh, a smidge. If you take testosterone and work out, are you going to build muscle? More, much more. Same thing's true with EAAs. So if you consume the essential amino acids and you train your body, you will have a greater impact than if you do either one on their own. All right, and then I'm just going to read this last one because I don't want to get it wrong. So they go on to say at the end of this statement that free form EAA supplementation, so supplements of essential amino acids, is well within the safe upper limit of habitual daily consumption. EAA supplementation is efficacious in the vast majority of clinical studies and conditions and numerous longitudinal studies involving EAA supplementation in aging populations consistently report favorable improvements in metabolic as well as functional outcomes. So that's a very like, strong statement for an aging population, particularly the population that we serve, which is people that are struggling to produce muscle, struggling to improve their bone health. This is something that I think we really could um, add. It's relatively simple. They are kind of expensive. We'll talk about that later, uh, but something that is going to have a significant impact. Before I go on to a couple of studies that I want to point things out in, let me just mention this, that if you are struggling to put together all this information, because I know we now have hundreds of videos, 
consider joining our free masterclass. The masterclass is where we put together all this information. We talk about how we build programs for our patients. Uh, this is in a 60 minute class. We reserve five to 10 minutes for questions. It's a really great free resource. If you haven't done that already, I would strongly encourage you to do that. If you're listening to this on a podcast, you can go to drdouglucas.com and you can learn more about that. If you're watching this on YouTube, look for the link in the description below. All right, so just a couple of studies to really cap this off as if it wasn't obvious enough already. Let me just go over a couple of kind of smaller studies, but I think they're really important because they're very specific to our population. So there's a 2009 randomized control trial where they used 15 grams per day of essential amino acids. So just out of context, most of the scoops are going to be between three and five grams of, uh, of powder. So this is probably going to be three to four scoops or potentially three to four servings of EAA. And they call this an older women. So again, don't get mad at me. Um, but the average age of this group was 68 years old. So take that for what it is. Um, so an average group of 68 years old women for three months, and what they saw is increased lean body mass, increased muscle protein synthesis rate, and an increase in IGF-1 protein expression. And I'll explain that in a minute. What they didn't see was an increase in one rep max. And you've heard me talk about that before. Um, and over three months, you know, I don't know that we would really see an increase in one rep max, depending on the population and the type of exercises they were doing. So I'm not too worried about that, but I love the IGF-1 protein expression. And if you haven't heard me talk about that, let me just take a second to explain it. So IGF-1 stands for insulin-like growth factor one. It is what I consider to be our anabolic catabolic switch. This is how I explain it to our patients. So IGF-1 is something we can measure in blood. And when it's really low, we know that you're in a catabolic state. You're in a breakdown state. So if you are trying to lose a significant amount of weight, you probably want your IGF-1 to be low. That means you're in the breakdown mode, both muscle and fat, preferably more fat than muscle. But if you're trying to build muscle, you don't want IGF-1 to be low. You want IGF-1 to be high. And this is where I deviate from a lot of people on the kind of anti-aging, anti-cancer groups, because they're going to want IGF-1 to be low all the time. You can't build muscle in that in that scenario. So you want IGF-1 to go up. And what this study was showing is that IGF-1 did go up in this group with the essential amino acids as the only intervention. So take that for what it is. All right, so this next study is from 2008, and it's another small study of 12 individuals, but it's a randomized control trial, and they were looking at essential amino acids and their effect on the ability to reverse gradual decline of muscle loss, strength, and function with aging. So this is sort of like an anti-aging uh, approach. They used a population that's kind of of interest here. So similar uh, age range, so 67-year-old average, but they were looking specifically for people that had glucose intolerance. And that's really important, I think, because some people fall into this category, um, not as common in the bone health group, but still present. Uh, but so many people develop glucose intolerance as they age, insulin resistance, all these things, and it can have an impact on your ability to build muscle. So I like this study for that reason. They also used 11 grams twice a day. So that's 22 grams of essential amino acids, which could be you know, four scoops, five scoops, six scoops, depending on the product, uh, which is quite a bit. And then they did that for 16 weeks. What they saw in this population is an increase in, again, lean body mass. They saw an increase in lower extremity strength, um, and this was in one rep max. So now 16 weeks, which is actually just a, you know, a little bit longer, four, four months, right? Uh, longer than the last study by one month. They did see an increase in one rep max. They also saw an increase in gait speed, an increase in the, these things that they do called the five-step, or the, sorry, the timed five-step test, the timed floor to transfer test. So kind of these different tasks that they do. Uh, and they saw an improvement across the board compared to placebo. So again, another study in an older population showing benefit from what is a pretty high dose of essential amino acids. All right, so the last study I'm going to point out here is an, a little bit older from 2008, a little bit bigger with 41 individuals. And fortunately, the dose is a little smaller. So they did eight grams of EAAs per day. So we're not dealing with like five and six scoops of a relatively expensive product. Um, so eight grams of EAA in, again, elderly subjects. Um, this is a group, though, that specifically had sarcopenia. So they had muscle loss by definition. I don't know what they based their diagnosis off of, but this is pretty common and very common in our population of interest. And the study was over 18 months, which is really long for a supplement study. So 18 months, eight grams per day. And what they saw was an increase in, again, whole body lean mass. So they're building muscle, but improvements in glucose, insulin and insulin resistance. So that's great from a metabolic perspective. They saw also a reduction in inflammatory markers. 
probably more so because of the increased muscle mass, I would think, although, you know, potentially the amino acids are doing that on their own, improving the immune system, possibly. Um, and then they also saw, like I mentioned earlier, an increase in IGF-1, which again is what we want if we're going to build muscle, if we're going to build bone. All right. So I hope that makes my point clear that essential amino acids, branching amino acids, all lumped together in a powder that you can put in, you know, just about anything. It does have a little bit of a flavor to it. So uh, depending on how it's made, uh, sometimes these are more or less tolerable, but this can be extremely beneficial, especially if you're struggling to improve muscle mass. So I mentioned in the beginning that I was going to talk about a product. So a good friend of mine, Rick Cohen, he's a physician, he's a, an experimenter, he has a, a, a clinical practice as well, but he loves making great products. So uh, Rick and I were talking about the best essential amino acid products out there. And he has a product uh, that I can get behind. It's called Fundaminos, and we are using it personally, I'm recommending it now to my patients. And what I like about this product is that it is has all the EAAs that we want. He's kind of pushed leucine to the max that he can tolerate uh, from a taste perspective. And you get five grams per um, per serving. And then he also has some other interesting components in there like cherry pure and actogen, which can also reduce inflammation, potentially improve sleep, uh, improves recovery. And they looked at some evidence behind this particular product that shows that there's four times more effective um, uh, absorption and production of protein than uh, dietary protein on its own. What I also love about this product is that there's 60 servings per container and most of the competitors are around 30 servings per container and it costs less to begin with. So it's about half as expensive as some of the other products that we use. So now you're talking about a quarter of the cost, which is amazing. Um, and we can also give you an additional 15% off. So for those listening to this, if you go to Pure Clean Performance, uh, and the link for this will be in the show notes, but if you go to Pure Clean Performance and you use uh, PCPOHH15, that's P, uh, as in pure, C as in clean, P as in performance, OHH15, and you'll get 15% additional off of that. So we can try to make this as affordable as possible. Uh, and again, if you're on YouTube, just look for the link in the description below. So that's it. I hope that all made sense. So my friends, remember that you are created for greatness. So seek optimal, not average. Don't be afraid to be extraordinary because you are, and that's what it takes. I'll see you next time. This presentation is for general informational purposes only, does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this presentation are at the user's own risk. The content in this presentation is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.